and those uh, could have been a difficult decision for you. And I appreciate your time here today. And I'm here today without representation, legal representation against the advice of my attorneys. They mean well. They're intelligent. They've been doing it much longer than I have. But uh, sometimes they give bad advice. The injunction that uh, was presented several weeks ago, they all meant well. Um, but it was bad advice. And I should have thought about it a little bit more and said no to that. And the conduct that was at this preliminary hearing in these chambers, um, they meant well. Uh, they had a lot of good ideas, ideas that were a lot higher than my pay grade. And, uh, but it was a bad idea uh, and bad advice for them to proceed as they did. And so no one in the community has heard my side. We have heard Mr. Taylor's side for months and months. But no one has heard my side. And this is an attack on my credibility, my character, and who better but to represent that than me and represent the honor uh, of the office of mayor. Now, I find it a little difficult to believe that Mr. Smith and Mr. Taylor are here purely about rules of government and to cure an ill, uh, as they say, um, for expenditures, particularly when Starting back in December, there has been a sign on Mr. Taylor's car that says, get rid of John Frederick. Bad grammar, but still, get rid of John Frederick. That started in December. And then there were signs in January and February from Mr. Taylor about um, expense accounts or checking accounts or some ridiculous nature. So this started a long time ago. And it began political. Now, for us to, in a vacuum, think that this is purely for good government uh, is a little difficult to believe. But for the moment, for the purposes of today, let's, let's do that. And let's take all the facts that have been presented and go over them one by one if we can. Now, I'm trying not to take as long as the, um, the acclaimant has, but uh, there's a lot to go over. But let's, let's start with the per diem. And per diem truly does mean pay for a day. And the description that is on the Georgia Department of Community Affairs um, expense form is different than is on the Department of Transportation expense form. And is different than is on the uh, form for the uh, Department of Natural Resources form. Because the state law is so large that it can include anything, but for IR's purposes, they have to include some things. It can include inconvenience, fluids, oils, and gases, brake fluids, your phone bill, any out-of-pocket expense, it says in the state statute, any out-of-pocket expense. So every form in the state that you'll see, that you pull up, will have something different, but convenient and quick. So that, they can, so that they can put there what they mean by that. And it's for IRS purposes. But it's that person's money. And as was already stated here, if a person drives eight miles to a meeting at the DCA board meeting or the DOT board meeting, and I drive 240, the per diem is the same. That person has almost zero out-of-pocket expenses. He can pay his phone bill. He can rotate his tires if he wants to. He can do whatever he wants with it. And so in the strictest of definitions, the complainant tries to tell you that it must be used for hotel and meals. But it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to. Thirdly, and this is interesting because I've had probably six now phone conference meetings with the DCA and other board meetings and boards that I serve on. And I'm sitting in my office in Palo Alto, Georgia, or in my truck on my cell phone, or downstairs in the city mayor's office. And they call roll. We have a meeting agenda, and we all vote on the phone. 
They usually last about 45 minutes to an hour. Right before we hang out, uh, there's a reminder by Ms. Ponce, be sure to send in your per diem. And we get $105 for our time. Now, at that same time, I was getting paid by the city of Alaska. And at that same time, I was getting paid by my wife at All States Food and Storage. So I was triple dipping. I was triple dipping on salary. But they paid me my 105 because that's what they think my time is worth and everyone's time is worth. In fact, we have a representative and a senator that serves on the Department of Human Affairs. I wonder when they come to a meeting during session, if they get paid a per diem by the state, and they sign a per diem from DCA. I wonder if it would be wrong. They're up during session, they get paid a per diem, just like Amy Gard does, and just like Jason Shaw Jason does. And they go to board meetings because they have appointments too. They didn't have to travel much. What was the out-of-pocket expense? So no one, there has been a presumption that it's wrong, but no one has proven that it's wrong. Additionally, when I heard news that I was appointed by the government to serve on the Department of Community Affairs, arguably the second largest and most powerful board in the state, the senior staff at City Hall were ecstatic. We had never had an appointee from the City of Alaska. I served the entire first congressional district, Jack Kingston's district, so I have to represent all those people. They were elated. And I remember the conversation that I had with Larry Hansen and Mayor Register. Mayor is all the housing that, that happens in the city, and that comes through DCA. Larry, of course, has been in government for 31 years. He knows how much money funnels through DCA. All of our edge grants and everything that goes to the industrial authority comes through DCA. Just there's 72 sections of money and help and assistance that comes through DCA. I said, now this is going to be some additional expense. Larry said, we'll pay it all, Mayor. We'll pay it all. And Mayor was right there and said, absolutely, it's well worth it. We are so pleased to have someone on board. The DCA is going to do so much for us to have an inside track on what's going on. Advanced notice of grants. We get staff attention that we would gladly pay every penny of your expense for this. But I asked.